Okay, everybody, I did not get my husband to help me with this because I just didn't have time last night. But better yet, I have a couple of physics kids. Say hi, physics kids. Hi. Hi, there you go. Um, so we're going to talk about the next page of notes, and it's going to be for points of discontinuity, and then we'll talk about the degrees of a polynomial. So the points of discontinuity tell us about holes in a graph versus vertical asymptotes. Sympatote. Okay, which are x equals. The degrees on the numerator and the denominator tell us about horizontal asymptotes. Asymptotes, which are y equals. All right, um, if you like to read math, please feel free to read this, but I'll walk you through it. Um, if you like to read math, read this. It's about the degree thing, but we'll walk you through each one of those. Okay, here we go, physics student. Let's say we have this function. It's very important that we factor this function. Does the numerator factor? No. No, it doesn't. Very good. So we'll leave it as x minus 2. Does the denominator factor? Yes. Yes. Do you, can you factor that for me? Can you tell the students what this factors to? x minus 2 and x minus 3. Excellent. Very good factoring skills. Now, the points of discontinuity are the points that would make the denominator 0. What would make this 0? 2. And what would make this one 0? 3. Very good. So x equals 2 and x equals 3 are points of discontinuity. I have to be careful when I say that right. Okay, now we're going to say if they're removable or not removable. To be removable means they would cancel out. So do you see two things that would cancel out, one in the numerator and one in the denominator? Yes. What are they? X minus 2 and, and X minus 2. Okay, so that means this one is removable. What about the 3? Is it removable? Nope. Nope. So we'll call it non-removable. Okay, now the new part, because they did that up above, we're going to talk about if those are holes or if they are asymptotes. So the holes will happen at x equals that number, and the asymptotes will happen as a vertical line at that number. All right, now, if they're removable, they're just holes. So this one would be a hole. That is correct. But if they're non-renewable, they would be a vertical asymptote. So I would write vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So if you were like graphing it and you got to like x equals 3, there would be a vertical asymptote. The graph would approach, or and when you get to x equals 2, there would be like a hole in the graph. All right. If you guys want, go ahead and go to Desmos and look at those. Do I have more? Oh, I do have more. Horizontal asymptotes. Okay. Horizontal asymptotes <clears throat> deal with the degree and the numerator, which is the highest exponent, and then the degree in the denominator, which is the highest exponent in the denominator. What's the highest exponent you see in the numerator? One. That is correct. What's the highest degree you see in the denominator? Two. Okay. So would you agree that we're going to focus on x to the first over x squared? The denominator is <clears throat> greater than the numerator. So reading this crazy math right here says that if the degree in the denominator is bigger than the degree in the numerator, that's actually this fact right here, we have a vertical asym, or excuse me, a horizontal asymptote, so I'm gonna write bigger. Where do you think the horizontal asymptote happens? At? Y equals zero. That's right, and that just came from reading this chart. Like, if the bottom is bigger than the top, the horizontal asymptote would be the x-axis where y is zero. All right, now we'll go through that uh, two more times, but we won't have to do as much explaining. Okay, you ready? Can you factor the numerator for me? Right here. That would here. be x plus 5 and x minus 3. Can you factor the denominator for me? That would be 2x minus 3 and x plus 5. And if students are struggling, please pause the video and do the box method or the grouping method, whichever one you're more comfortable with. All right, now we're going to focus on the denominator. This one is a little more difficult than this one. Do you know what value of x would make the first one discontinuous? 3 halves. Mm -hmm. A positive 3 divided by 2. What about the next one? 3. That one's a 5. I'm sorry, you probably oh, five. can't see that. So yeah, five. Negative 5, yeah. I was stealing the iPad. I have it tilted completely away from you. All right, so x equals 3 halves is one of my points of discontinuity. x equals negative 5 of my... Wow. 
That's embarrassing. Negative. Do you think one of those is removable? Does one of those cancel out in the original? Uh, yeah, the X plus five. Good. So that one was removable. I'll just put a big R. And what about the three halves? Is that one removable? No. No, very good. So I'll just write NR for non-removable. Okay, next. The non-removable non ones, is that the vertical asymptote or is that the whole? The vertical asymptote. That is correct. So I'll write vertical asymptote at, where is it, x equals 3 halves or 1.5. Now, what do you think the removable one is? It's a hole. That's right. So it's just going to have a hole in the graph at x equals negative. This is going to help you in calculus. You'll do this in calc, but it'll be a little more like crazy. All right, now let's focus on the highest degree. What do you see? I see x squared over what on the bottom? x squared. Yep, another, the double, the 2x squared. That's right. So we look at the term that has the highest degree, and we just focus on those. Do you agree that the degrees match? Like the degree is yeah. 2 and 2. Okay. If that happens, we focus on their coefficients, which means the number in front of them. So what's the number in front of this one? One. Just a one. So the actually there will be a horizontal asymptote, and it will happen at y equals one half. So it's almost like you picture those canceling out, and you get a one half. <clears throat> so that's how you find horizontal asymptotes. All right, that one took a lot shorter. Let's see if we can do this one too. Does the numerator or the denominator factor? Uh, the numerator. That's correct. And it is, how does that one factor? It's a little tricky. X. And just a GCF, that's right. What happens if you pull that X out? You get 3X minus 4. Good. And that, does this factor? No. No, so we'll just bring it over. Do you see already that we have something that's going to cancel? Yep. Good. Now, the denominator can't be 0. That doesn't factor. So what uh, value of X would be the point of discontinuity? That would be four-thirds. That's right. A positive four when you move it over, divide by three. Um, so that's my only point of discontinuity. I have to say that slowly. Is it removable? Does it cancel out? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So since that cancels out, we would call it removable. There are no non-removable. Since it's removable, do we call those holes or vertical asymptotes? We call it a hole. That's right. And that happens at x equals four-thirds. Last thing, we're going to do the horizontal asymptotes. By the way, there was no vertical asymptote on this problem. Okay, right here, what are we going to focus on? What do you think? The exponents. Yep, and we'll, on the top, we'll focus on what term? 3x squared. And on the bottom? 3x. That's right. Let's write them down here, 3x squared over 3x. They don't match. The powers don't match. So we're going to say that the numerator, wow, almost the numerator has the bigger exponent, so there is... No horizontal asymptote. You got it to worry about. Good job. Thank you. You were an excellent filler. Appreciate you. What was his name, Bobby? Yep. Mm -hmm.